Hey guys, welcome back to Clownfish TV. This is Neon. I am here with Geeky Sparkles. Hello. And we're going to talk about comic books. We don't talk about comic books much anymore because uh, not a lot of people are reading comics. Therefore, not a lot of people are looking for information on comics. Therefore, nobody's watching our videos about comics. But this was uh, particularly interesting because we have talked a lot about the... Were they the art fixers, the skin tone oh, police yes. on yes. on Twitter? The, we 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 envisioned it this way because it is we because we said so. It's coded that way because we said it's so. Coded, coded. You know, like like Riley has to be trans because we said so from yeah. the inside out, etc., yeah. etc. Uh, so now we've got uh, the My Little Pony fandom uh, attacking, going after one of the most well known My Little Pony comic book artists, Andy Price. And he's basically like, yeah, I might be done. I might be done with this because apparently there was a black coated pony and he didn't draw her mane. Is it a he or she? Black enough. I think it's a she. Okay. I don't know. It could be a they, them. The way things are going now, I have no idea. I have no idea the gender of these ponies. But... Um, <laughs> Lift the tail. Uh, you lift the tail. <laughs> well, even then, they're just presenting. Oh, that's I right. I don't know. Right. But she presents as a black pony according to the fans according to the fans okay and uh you, you need to draw her as such uh andy and andy didn't do it Is now this like that mentality that it works or, or stand-ins for black people and all that yes stuff, well know? that's okay uh wizards of the coast made it so much better they made the mexicans <laughs> you know, I know. Um, <laughs> that's that's just a better that's it. so we'll, we'll talk about this because uh because geeky is a a fan of My Little Pony. Uh, and, the, um, the original My Little Pony. The original. I like the G3s, though, the, the toys. I didn't, the shows are okay. I don't really watch the shows. I just buy the toys. Friendship is magic. I was watching it with our daughter when she was very little. And I'm like, yeah, this actually isn't bad. It wasn't and, bad, no. And then the bronies happened. And then it was like, oh, shit. It's well, there was some weird weirdness now. there. There's but... some weirdness. Now, there are some good bronies. We actually have a, a good family friend who... He does no longer says he's no longer a brony. But, yeah, but... Um, I... Like the original Milo ponies. I collect the toys. I like them. She's got a lot, a lot of ponies. I do I like ponies? Um, but anyway, back to the point because no get, one cares about that. Let's get back to the point. The point is, we're going to talk about My Little Pony and the art fixers. And we have seen this happen so, so, so oh my many God, times. Constantly. Uh, mostly it's about skin tones, but now we're talking about hair cells. Remember the uh, the Afro poofs in Animal Crossing? Yes, and, and that all... Nintendo had to say that anybody can use the Afro poofs. <laughs> Any, it, anybody it, can use the Afro the, the hairstyles across different cultures. It's not just one type of one one race of people. So let's uh let's let's party like it's uh 2016 Tumblr all over again before we get into it any further. Please subscribe for more pop culture news views. And rants, guys, you get woohoo if you do. Woohoo! Go out to clownfishminus.com. That's our non plus plus club. Uh, your first month is half off, and we're going to give you bonus content and you get uh, merchandise discounts. And we're working on some more merch. Eventually, this is going to be where we, we put all of our stuff, our merchandise shelf on YouTube. So our comics and stuff will uh, eventually wind up on here. But uh, I love this hat. Yes, he does. I'm, I'm getting this hat. I'm going to wear this hat. I'm going to wear this. This is going to be the neon hat. That's what we're going to call it. Uh, so we'll get to uh, Yanzi Lin's um, tweet here in a second. But I found this on Reddit. And Reddit was a breeding ground for this kind of nonsense, too. Uh, coding is just tumblerized stereotyping. So yes. Sparky. Um, you know, yeah, yes. Yep. You mean like, you know, because back to the Shira show. But like, because Frosta has ice power, she's an Eskimo. Yeah, you right. know, and Snake Eyes has to be Asian because you know martial arts, but yeah. that's that's winning, guys. That's winning. That's 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 showing everyone stereotyping is wrong. Yeah, it's really weird how freakishly obsessed a lot of these cartoon stands are about coding of cartoon characters and also who they're fucking. That's yes. You know what I'm saying? Things, like yes. it's those two things. Well, like ships. Yeah, because that's exactly yeah. who they're effing. Yeah, ships. The ships and, and the stereotypes and the coded stuff. The, yeah, it's it's ridiculous. Yeah. So um let's go out here. And yeah, we've got uh, we've got a guy who's been drawing uh the My Little Pony comics like forever. And uh he's pretty well regarded in that community, or was pretty well regarded in that community, as I understand. It. Again, I'm not a brony, but uh, you know, I have friends who are, and I said, Yeah, um, Andy Price, everybody likes his art. But he got called out. So uh, Yanzi Lin had this, and I, I noticed it yesterday. Um, 
She said in the year 2024, people are bullying Andy Price, the longtime My Little Pony comic book artist, for not drawing what they perceive as a black-coated pony correctly because he didn't draw Afro-style hair. Hasbro mandated it for him to draw it that way. Otherwise, but fans like these are insufferable. But I don't understand, like... Okay. What's, what's up? the problem? What's up with her mane? It looks like a totally different mane cell and hair texture with all the calyx and a lack of her cornrows. How do you draw... So here's the thing. Characters look different in 3D than they do in 2D anyway because there's only so much you can do with pen and ink and also keep it the style of the you know the rest of the comic um andy price said this is the reference i was told to use we were explicitly told not to use the 3d version for reference okay yeah, so there you go yeah but that's not the same hairstyles what you drew though but that then you stopped on telling you they were told to use that Version and the other version isn't as puffy, but you you can see where it's, it's similar. So Hasbro does. There is somebody at Hasbro that does sign off on these. I was going to say they had the bin. You had, and if they don't like it, they'll tell you to do it again. So trust me, bro. I know because my God, the Disney people with IDW, the, the, the <laughs> and they were ridiculous. They were so mad about. It. So this is what they nitpick was so stupid. You don't have a railing on that side. But there isn't one in the ride. It doesn't yeah. matter. You need so, to add it. Let me let me explain here. So I did a little bit of work for IDW after we did like 10, 15 years in the trenches working on different licensed Disney comics for other publishers. So I already had my, my Mickey Mouse certificate. I had my piece of paper from Disney that I was a, a vetted Disney artist approved to work on licensed stuff. Get a call from IDW. Hey, you want to do a couple of theme park covers? for us for Disney. And one of them was test track with uncle Scrooge, two of my favorite things. So I'm like, hell yeah, I'll do this. You did that one. You did a, it's a small world. They I were did the small variants. world one they too. Were yeah. They were very, they were like the retailer incentives or whatever, which I, I feel honored to be a retailer incentive. You have to buy 25 copies to get it. Get or one of him That's to right. get one of me. And then people were like, they, at one point they're selling for a lot of money. And I had like a whole box full of them. I forgot I had, they'd like send me a whole box full. So um, anyway, uh, yeah. So test track has, as a guardrail because of course it does because you're dealing with a high-speed vehicle and god forbid i drew that on the cover oh yeah it was yeah and and uh, i was told i had to remove the the guardrail even though it's on the attraction i had to remove the guardrail because it gives the impression that the ride is unsafe oh also the ducks weren't they didn't have their seat belts on so i had to put the seat belts on yes yeah, and uh, then um, also Huey, Dewey, and Louie were all doing crack cocaine in the back seat, <laughs> and they said you can't you can't do that either. I'm like, but that goes on at Disney all the time. I I, I don't know. No, no, no. They but said you have to use meth. I think no. I went through. <laughs> I think I you have to use meth instead. I think I went through like. God, I swear to God, like nine revisions with that. That was the most. And it was ridiculous. It was I IEW it was and insane. it pays shit. Like the Small World one, you didn't have hardly any problems Small with. Small World, I was shocked. Small World, the part of the ride, the only thing that pissed me off about that was they uh, they didn't know where to, whoever was doing the pre-press, I, I, I left the bleed and they left the, like the rough edges of the artwork on it because it was supposed to bleed off of the cover. And they didn't trim that. So I get the cover and it looked unfinished around the edges. I'm like, but that's because it was a bleed. You're supposed to, God, okay, whatever. It's IDW, right? It's IDW. I don't even think they use spell check on shit now. But this was 10 years ago. But no, I actually was able to put, and I was shocked, I was able to put the uh, African part of the ride, which is my favorite part of the ride with the animals. Mm -hmm. And I got the elephant and I had uh, black people on the cover. For the first time on this Scrooge. Oh, that's and, right. Yeah, you yeah. did. Yeah, and, but we're so we're so anti everything and we're racist. And but, you know, uh, I don't think that had been done before because I actually had an editor from another public or another publisher that we work for in Disney was like, "How did you get away with that?" And I'm like, "I it's don't know." The ride. It, it's on the ride, but for some reason I could I could do because they're like, "Well, they didn't want it to be stereotypes." You know, what I'm saying it wasn't because mm -hmm. they had a problem with black people. They just didn't want stereotypes. I'm like, "Well, I drew them the way they look on the ride," and I put put it on the cover um they had no problem with that but they had a huge problem with the guard a guardrail <laughs> a freaking guardrail so, yes. do i think that it's possible that you know they were told to draw it in a certain way and and, and they might even have revisions during it we don't know 
And then when they got to a point where they signed off and agreed that's what they wanted. So I'm sure what you got in the comic is what they signed off on and what they asked for. Um, he was just doing what they asked him to. Yeah. So here they have a whole, this is, this is the typical, this is what Do Twitter. Do not harass any of these don't people. Don't harass any of these people. I better specify because they'd be like, you sent them to harass people. No, I didn't. Don't. They're probably either 14 year old girls or 34 year old men with mental issues. So don't harass them, um, please. But yeah. So yeah, they're like, Hey, uh, the designs both clearly convey textured Afro coils. The comic design made it messy, moderately curly. Literally. What are you talking about? And this person said, I'm not assuming ill intent of Andy price at all for the record, but you're right. It's clearly not the same hair texture and it's something closer to Izzy's rea- really Misty's hair <laughs> simplified is basically pinkies or pear, but Oh my God, this is so like in the weeds with the, my little pony. It's like, it's, it's scrum dilly uh, ass symbol. Just isn't the right color of, of chartreuse for me. You're, you're whitewashing. You're whitewashing scrum dilly ass symbol what are they called it's called a cutie mark okay just ass so tattoo know. ass tat then you need to call them ass tats <laughs> oh my god <laughs> you Tramps. go up to somebody at a convention <laughs> and saw them and be like well what's that one with that you know she has apple ass tats she has a- what apple ass tat do you know what they say <laughs> oh my god that's that's the new name for applejack if they if they i know that one if they lose the rights <laughs> If they lose the rights to my little to Applejack, because like Hasbro's always losing a trademark, that's her new name is Apple Astat. Apple Astat, okay. Or Hot Tua, because well, that's know, what she reminds they, me the of. The whole like. thing with the, with the the baby ponies, even though the J one baby ponies had Astats, but when they got to the um, the show, like it was a big thing. They were waiting for their cutie symbols to appear. It was kind of like you know that time of the month or something, and. Um, you know, so it's like when you reach a certain age, you just magically get it to get it. Well, it's wait, a cutie wait. mark, I, I just caught, not an I, ass tat. I was reading these tweets. I just caught what you're saying. So wait, ponies don't menstruate. No, no. They I'm just have, saying they, they, they have, have this their, whole thing that they're, they're, they're like, you know, they get a certain age. They, they're all waiting to get their, um, their, their cutie mark. Not an ass tat. Cutie mark. And it was like a whole point plot. So point. it was like a whole, their I think it was period. like a stand in for some kind of like puberty thing. But you know. Um, so you grow, you, so you magically an ass tat appears you get to and then you, age, get you can just go get pubes between your legs or some No, shit. what are you adding? Just stop. Are they curly? Did you draw we, them correctly? No, you have to draw them right. <laughs> um, so here, okay, back to the point. Okay. If I had to guess, the artist and the team may not know how to draw her type of hair. Nobody in production really caught this. Uh, they didn't catch it. It's on several, several panels, but okay. Oh, God. Especially since Hasbro might just be trying to push these out now that G5 is almost over. I could be wrong. You probably are because they're on several panels. Where are her braids? Where are her Afro poofs? And they always use cartoon avatars. No, I can't say anything as I'm a talking cartoon avatar, but I use my At least real you're your own on. avatar. I'm my own avatar. It's like, God, where do these people come from? And yeah, he's just like, I might be done. I'm like, sure this might be it. harassed. Like, you know, and he did what they asked him to. And this reminds me of so many other artists. Like, what was the one artist that was on Steven Universe and did another, did a, a ship of her own? And then oh, they, they yeah. threatened, they, they yeah. got her to place she wanted to kill herself. These people are nuts. We've had the one instance where I stepped in where they had, they were all underage. But like a couple uh, underage she fans were mad, you know, the princesses of power, you know, Andy Stevenson version were mad because somebody drew a, an original Mermista fan art piece and they were attacking them time to kill themselves over whitewashing Mermista, even though yeah. Mermista was white originally. Now, um, Katie Cook, I, th- I think she did Pony Comics too. Like, again, I'm, I'm obviously not the target demographic, but so I yeah, know. Yeah, Katie I know, Cook did. Yeah, I'm pretty okay. sure she did. Yeah. So apparently no one got the memo. Only I am allowed to make outrageous accusations towards you and spit venom your way on your onto your WKRP shirt. Uh, this person said, you're not done yet. Your work in this newest Pony comic brought me back into buying IDW Pony Comics. I think his stuff's cute. Yeah, he's 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 pretty well regarded in that circle. Like I know he's been doing it for like what, like ten or fifteen years, but it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what your reputation is. It doesn't matter if if there was past fan goodwill. If if the Tumblr rights and the redditors and the Twitter rights decide they don't like you for whatever reason, it literally is people just sitting there looking for things to to. Yeah, but we get accused of this all the time, even though it's not really the case. 
they, th- this is more the case. You have a comic book of My Little Pony characters, and then you go through looking for things to be outraged about 24 7. Yeah. Um, some of these people jumping in to defend them, though. Uh, please, God, Andy, don't let this be what ends your passion. But you know what? If you were doing this for so long and you're used to people liking your stuff, and then all of a sudden everything changed and was like, oh my God, the pony's not black enough. And then you're like being harassed by a bunch of juveniles or people men who identify as juveniles or whatever the fuck is going on i'd be i'd be upset too i mean this is kind of what happened with us with web comics and it i took i took it a lot i think a lot worse than you did but i just got so freaking sick of it like we saw this change we saw the tumblerization in full like it was like we did the web comic for years and then all of a sudden the audience started changing, the comments started changing. People are like, why aren't there more brown people or representative people in your comic? And what's with this? And da da da. And that's you know kind of racist. Though? They'll tell you that and then they'll follow with, but you're not allowed to, to represent them unless you're you actually are that, you know, whatever, but you have that condition or you are that race or you are that gender. You're not allowed to, you're not you're not even allowed to voice characters that aren't like you. So how the hell are we supposed to go draw people that aren't white? Where's we're, the where, where, we're gonna be doomed if we do, doomed if we don't. Where's the vitiligo? Where are the top surgery scars? No. Um what happened was there was actually a person that we used to be friendly with and then they just went crazy. But they had a comic and the comic was a fictional, a fictional planet where most of the people on this fictional planet had brown skin. Well, this person was white and then uh Tumblr happened and basically talked them out of doing their comic altogether. Just like stop doing your comic. You have no right to do it because you're drawing brown people and they were like brown people, with white hair on I'm this like, other planet. Why don't we have more brown people in your comic. It's like, because you're going to yell at me if I do. Just scream at me either way. So I might as well just do whatever the hell I want to do, right? Uh, this person here says, so I've read that they attacked you because of Misty's main style. That's the woke part of Twitter in action. They're getting minimized, to be honest. I think uh, they kind of ran the, the, literally ran the asylum for years and a lot of them disappeared when Musk came in. But people, uh, they think they're the good guys, but in reality, they're just hell. Everyone can draw Misty how they want, period. Yes. But in this case, it was, you know, they were told, he was told, do not draw it the same way as the 3D version, you know? And so he didn't. And again, you had to have gotten approval for this. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, And it's like, yeah. I I mean, look, sometimes people work on stuff in retrospect. They're like, yeah, maybe we shouldn't have done that or whatever. But it's like, this came right from Hasbro. Now it could be, you know, Hasbro doesn't give a shit because they're outsourcing their G1 <laughs> ponies or whatever. But, uh, you know, the, this this fandom, like, it, it's so weird. There was a, um, oh, I think I watched it. I think it might have actually been Jen, Jenny Nicholson, the, the, she does the, the Disney videos or whatever. But she, she was talking about, she said that, you know, back in the day, and, and I'm sure Geeky can remember this because she was part of the old pony fandom mm-hmm. like where you guys it used to be a bunch of women who grew up in the 80s and 90s there were some dudes too not a lot though no but, it was definitely female but you would get together and have like swap meets and there yes. were like old style message boards yes. like you used to and do they had your their own little cons but then hasbro ornament. took them over yes yeah i used to do your little like oh christmas yeah we do little christmas stuff. ornaments with swap you'd get like a list of names and then yeah. you'd make like the same ornament for 12 people and then you'd swap so at the end you'd get 12 ornaments that are based on my little pony and they got and then 12 people got your ornament it was it was cute little fun things yes and it changed with the bronies, but it wasn't just the bronies. It was just in general. It's like you got the bronies and then you got the shippers and then you got the skin tone police and all these weirdos that came into the cartoons is ground zero for this shit. All Video cartoons. Video games too, but cartoons is really bad. And I think, I think adventure time I, uh, and, and Steven universe definitely attracted a certain, certain audience from Tumblr. And it just sort of permeated any, any kind of cartoon, anything. I think the reason that we get as much shit as we get is one, we do talk about animation and a lot of other people do the kinds of videos that, that we do. They don't talk about it because they don't really give a shit about it. But we, we talk about it because we actually do give a shit. And we use cartoon avatars. 
Well, I, yeah, I think we also come from comics and stuff we like come that. From we had and shows pitched and things. We so, pitched yeah. shows. We yeah. Um, I love it. It's always funny to me when people are like, you know, you don't know anything. You don't know anything about this. You don't know what you're talking about. You're so full of crap. And it's like, well, we did do it. And then other people that are in the industry are like, no, no, actually, they're right. <laughs> you know, it's like yeah. it always amuses me. But anyway, continue back to the point. No, I just think it's. I just think it's uh, really sad. That this is what might actually. Oh, <laughs> acting, like, acting a like a victim. Oh, come on. Most of G5 fandom doesn't deserve shit all's drama for hair. But this person's like, you're acting like a victim. I'm still on G1, so, you know. Yeah. Send Andy love. He doesn't deserve the mistreatment. Um, black people can't have shit, can they? Says Free Palestine. I'm sure that's a real name. All he had to do was take the criticism professionally instead of throwing a but fit. But you guys were throwing a fit about the drawing that he had to to explained. I wasn't allowed to base it on that. I was supposed to base it on this. No, Andy, don't let some racist loser be the end of your passion. You are the pony comic artist. That's what I thought. I thought this person was basically the ponies like, you know, like Don Rosa is the ducks. Okay, right? but all these people who are being desperate for attention comments, they're the ones that were so desperate for attention that they were making the shitty comments to begin with. Just learn to dog, just learn to draw black hairstyles and this would go away. Do what we want and it'll go away. It doesn't, it sounds to me like there's a lot of people who who are like, keep doing it and ignore them. And there are complaining about it. Yeah, I know. It's just fucking stupid. I don't think he's used to the backlash. I think he was, well, we get this kind of shit all the time. Don't you know you're a racist if you don't like a star Wars movie or show <laughs> or whatever. Oh, we had I, a guy, women. And... There, there's a guy on guy, gal, they, them, whatever weirdo on Reddit who put a little clip together about how they fantasized about tracking me down to beat me up because I, I did a video about Transformers 1 failing at the box office, but if they'd actually watched the video, I said, I've heard nothing but good things about it. But you and, think the marketing And the marketing was bad. And, and, it, and we read an actual article that was an industry article yes. talking about it to, yes. to, to, just to justify and verify what we were saying. To, like, say it's not just us, you know. Everybody's and, and saying he, this. Oh, we get this all the time. Like, oh, yeah. There's this one yeah. guy, he's like ass mad about She-Ra. So, and he's just like, not, apparently he's constantly posting shit about us. And they're like acting like we're like making these videos about stuff like that now. And I'm like, this was years ago. No one cares. This whole they literally I, stepped over it and moved on. I wish I knew there's got to be some, some psychological reason, but like cartoon stands for some reason just are, I don't know if it's like you can't separate reality from, you know what I'm saying? Like you see this with, with live action shows to a degree, but you don't see the same kind of weird, I mean, really like unhinged behavior around, say, the Scarecrow and Mrs. King or something as you do around any any kind of cartoon show. I love show. that show. Anyway. I know, but I'm just saying like, I mean, there are people that get passionate about this stuff, but not like the cartoon people, the comic book people. They the get reason, really weird. The reason he brought that show up is because it was running on Roku yeah. yesterday <laughs> the day before yesterday. And I was like, I love this show. But you didn't hear about that. You never heard about like, I mean, there could have been some weird stuff, but it was also a different time. And if you wanted to get to somebody, you had to like send snail mail and that takes effort. Right, to actually yeah. write the letter, hey, I did, find though. the address. I did. I wrote to all the Star Wars book authors and told them I liked their books. And I wrote the snail mail and I sent it to the publishing house and they got the letters to them. And then they were, most of them all responded to me because I thought they deserved to be told their work was good. Yeah, and you Are got we, you got a character named after you. I did. That too, so. Are we going to wrap this up? We're wrapping this up. Don't do not do this to people. That's that's, that's really fucking stupid. It's that, just that, stupid. That's a really like, weird hill to... to you, know, you have one guy who's like the comic artist for all his books that you would supposedly enjoy. Trying to chase him off by, you know, mocking him is not going to help. Especially when he's explaining why what happened, you know. And this Clearly is, wasn't his fault. No, this is why Hasbro's outsourcing and everything. Because I think they don't want to deal with the weirdos. I think it's across the board. I think it's ponies. I think it's Transformers now. Because there's some weird <laughs> Transformer fans out there now. I think the only way to not deal with it is to not print them. But then they'll be mad that you don't print them anymore and harass you for that, too. So, yeah. clear out this up. We'll wrap it up. Please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants. We'll talk later. Bye. Join the reef. Go to clownfishminus.com. That's clownfishminus.com. You will get exclusive access to podcasts and videos and comic strips and more, as well as merch discounts. Check it out. If you were a member, you could get this t shirt, this dismal t shirt. On our website, you'd get a 10% discount on that. You can also join in the community on clownfishminus.com. Thank you so much for the support.